It's Champions Cup semi-final weekend and the second semi-final on Sunday has got the potential to be an absolute barnstormer. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the Amateur Rugby Podcast. I'm going to be here with you to the end of the domestic season and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, Toulouse versus Harlequins. It is just an absolutely mouth-watering prospect where these teams come from in recent weeks. Well, they've both done basically the same. They have won four out of their last five games uh, in all competitions, winning one, losing one in the last couple of weeks. So in terms of form lines, they are bang on track. Toulouse are getting all their big players back too. Dupont came back recently. Untermac, another guy who's back and in the side this week. These are big, big players and Toulouse are looking strong come the end of the season. Quinns, as I said, off a, off a win last week in the big game. Uh, they're looking, you know, typically Quinsy, let's be honest. You know, they're playing a lot of rugby, but they're conceding a lot of points as well. Who knows what kind of performance they're going to put out on this weekend. But it will be exciting, that's for sure. And all the talk around the Quinns camp this week is that they're showing no fear. There's no fear in going to Toulouse. And I don't know. I mean, that's a good thing. But sometimes... Like a little bit of fear can really drive performances a little bit harder and a little bit higher. You know, I think sometimes a bit of fear is good, but their party line is no fear, so good for them. Okay, selection, and as I mentioned earlier, Toulouse are basically at full whack here. And when they've got a bench with Marchand, Chocobaris and Ramos to come on, that just shows you the quality that they've got throughout this side. Their home, obviously, or home country advantage uh, the game is being played in Toulouse at the football stadium. And, yeah, rightly the favourites in this game based on, you know, performance, based on the team that they can get out. Quinns have been missing Joe Launchbury for, for a few weeks now. But in his place, Ernie Herbst has really shone. You know, I think when I've seen him previously, I thought maybe he was lacking a little bit on, on fitness. He didn't quite have the mobility uh, to sort of really perform at the highest level, but... That has changed in recent weeks. He is playing a lot of minutes and I think he's playing some really good rugby. So he could be a key player on Sunday. But the big selection decision for Harlequins, Finn Baxter, keeps his place at the loose head after his last outing in France was an absolute world beater. He keeps Joe Marla to the bench, which is, you know, that could be a changing of the guard there. Who knows? But look out for another big performance from him. Now, we're hoping for a real sunny day down in the south of France to let these teams absolutely shine. Looks like it's not going to be sunny, a bit grey, no, weather, no uh, rain or sort of bad weather. But, um, so it should be set for a good game in terms of the weather. Now then, some key matchups. Of course, these live wire halfbacks on both teams are going to be all over the place and you know, creating stuff. But I think the one that I'm really looking forward to is Tyrone Green against Blair Kinghorn. Two fullbacks I really like, but very different styles. Tyrone Green's a bit more of a, a dipper and a dasher. Kinghorn's like a real graceful glider. Um, both in really good form, particularly Tyrone Green, who's leading uh, a lot of stats at the moment. And then can Chandler Cunningham South continue where he left off in previous weeks? His England form was outstanding, had an injury, but he's come back strong and he's just getting back to full match fitness now. This will be a massive game against him and especially against his opposite number, uh, Francois Cross, who had a fantastic Six Nations himself. But I think the key matchup will be somebody I mentioned earlier. I think even though we're going to see Galactico style rugby and the ball being moved all over the place, I think getting go forward will be the massive key factor in this game. And in that respect, Ernie Herbst against Emmanuel Miafo could be the key battle. If Quinns can stop Miafo at source, you know, he likes to get on a big rumble, he likes to carry people with him. They need to chop him down early and get rid of those offloads. I think that might be the key factor in this game. Who's going to win? Well, to be honest, this is one of those games where really anything could happen. I think Quinns are very capable of winning, but they're also capable of losing by 40 or 50. How's it going to go? I think, I think Toulouse will be too strong. I don't think they'll be able to keep Mirfu quiet for the whole game. And I think that forward momentum will be enough to create space for the absolute uh, worldies in the back line to score plenty of tries. 
I see Toulouse winning. I don't think it's going to be close. I think by two or three scores in the end. Okay, that's what I think. But what do you think? Any key factors that I've missed? Anything that I haven't mentioned that you think will make a big difference in this game? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know who you think is going to win as well. Give me a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.